Within this unit, we're going to be looking at voting and apportionment. Um, with this, there are different ways that votes can be counted, and we're going to be looking at those different ways and talking about how that could change or affect um, your winners. So today we're actually going to be working with two different methods. We're going to be looking at the plurality method and then the pairwise comparison method. So to start with, I guess you guys need a title, huh? Plurality and pairwise. So we're working with the plurality first. Um, this one is the easiest one. Um, you would look at your selection or your candidates and you vote for the one you're top ranked. And this is the only vote that you have. So it's not like you're going through and um, going, okay, this person's number one, my number one choice, this person's my number three. You're only voting for your top ranked and whoever has the most votes, whoever or whatever has the most votes wins. Um, I'm not gonna go into this particular method, um, I think this one's pretty self-explanatory. I really want to work with the pairwise comparison method. With the pairwise comparison method, um, some people have considered this to be similar to like a round robin tournament. Uh, for those of you that have played volleyball in a round robin or basketball or whatever type of sport, um, you know what a round robin is. You have different pools, and within those pools, you are playing everyone within that pool, and you're figuring out, okay, wh who's ranked better than who based on that pool. It's the same type of method. So you're comparing... You're comparing each selection or each, we'll call it candidates to kind of keep it similar. Comparing candidates to one another, then assigning a point. Okay, so this might look a little confusing. Um, I understand that. We're going to work with this. Okay. Uh, this next part, some information is going to be given to you before you actually start looking at your pairwise. Um, for instance, so you're going to be given a table. You're going to have the number of votes and then some type of ranking. Okay, so this first one has six votes and it goes B is greater than P, which is greater than C. Then we're going to have five votes. C is greater than P, which is greater than B. And then the last one, four votes. P is greater than C, which is greater than B. Okay, so right now you have no idea what I'm talking about. That's okay. Um, let's say, for instance, that... We're looking at prom and we're trying to figure out, okay, do we order beef, pork, or chicken? Okay, so that's what the B, P, and C stand for, beef, pork, and chicken. And we have to pick one selection, and so we're going to use the pairwise voting selection in order to figure out which meat selection we are going to use. Okay, so with that being said, I'm going to look at different comparisons. So before, in my definition here, it says comparing candidates to one another, then assigning a point. 
Okay, so I have to compare beef and pork. So when I'm comparing beef and pork, I'm going to look at, okay, look at each individual row to determine who won. So what that means, I'm going to look at this first row here. Looking at this, who won? Did beef win or did pork win? In this case, beef won. So our beef is going to have six votes there because we that's the number of votes. So now we're going to look at the next line. Did beef win in the five votes there? The answer would be no. Pork won for five votes. And now I'm going to look at that last one. Okay, did pork win or did beef win? Pork won with four votes. So looking at this, when I'm looking at pork and beef, pork had a total of nine, beef had a total of six. So obviously, pork won compared to beef. Okay, so we're gonna have a little ranking, or not a ranking, a point system. Okay, so remember, comparing candidates to one another, okay, we did that, we compared beef and pork and found out pork won, then assigning a point. Because pork won, we're giving them one point. Okay, so now, now I'm going to compare pork and chicken. So I do this process all over again. Pork and chicken. So starting with my green there, pork one compared to chicken, so pork gets six points. Looking at the blue, chicken won in that round, so chicken gets five votes there. And now let's look at the red. Pork won compared to chicken. So I have a grand total of pork with ten votes and chicken with five. So pork gets another vote or another point. So now I'm going to compare, I got one left to compare, beef and chicken. I kind of already know based on this that pork's going to win. I only have one other point to go towards. And I obviously know that it's, even if it goes to beef or if it goes to chicken, either way pork's going to win. But I'm still going to compare them to see how they do. So with the beef, let's look at the top one. Did beef or chicken won? win compared in the six votes. Beef won, so they get six points. Six votes. Um, line, let's look at the blue. Chicken won over beef. And now let's look at the red line. Chicken won over beef again. So chicken won that one with a total of nine votes where beef won with six votes. So chicken gets my point. So looking at this, I've got beef, pork, and chicken. Which one won? Pork is my selection. Okay. So it all depends on your ranking system and how many votes there are. So you're looking at, you're comparing each individual thing to one other thing. So I compared beef and pork, then I compared pork and chicken, and then beef and chicken, and I assigned points of who won that quote unquote battle round, okay? So we'll do more with this in class. As of right now, you aren't going to have a another example, and we'll do more in class. So.
um, this is the pairwise comparison method and the plurality method.